Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Now in this video, we're going to be going over exactly how to connect our Airtable accounts to Bubble so that we can view our Airtable data within Bubble itself. And we can also create and modify the records in Airtable using our Bubble application. So let's get into it. So in this video, what we want to do is we want to link this database in Airtable to our Bubble account. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to visually see this information. So the project name, the project notes, for example, and then we also want to have the ability to update these notes. So let's jump into our Bubble editor and go over exactly how to do this. The first step we need to do is we need to add the Airtable plugin. So this allows us to connect our Bubble app to Airtable and it's by Bubble itself and we'll install this one. What I need to do now is I need to add an account and I need this personal access token. So if I jump over to Airtable and I'm here on Airtable.com, I've already signed up and logged in. And if I go to my account here, we can see that there's a developer hub. So we'll go to our developer hub We'll click on personal access token on the left and we'll click create token. What we can add now is just a token that is relevant to us. So the token name that will allow us to know that this is for this particular application. So I'm just going to call it test air dev air table app. And then what I can add is a scopes. So scopes really allow me to limit the amount of information and access that each token provides. When we're adding scopes, I would always say add the least amount of scopes that you can. The reason why is we want to limit the amount of access that anyone has to our Airtable application with these personal access tokens. The reason why is just say if a hacker or anyone who shouldn't have access to the token does somehow get their hands on it, this limits the amount of information they can access and the amount of information they could potentially modify or change. So for that reason, we want to add only the scopes that are required. So we can go through this and we can see what each scope does. We want to be able to see the data and records. So I'm going to add that one. We want to be able to create and edit and delete records. I'll add that one. We also need to be able to see the structure of the base and we may want to edit the structure of the base as well. So those are the scopes I'm adding. We then can define the amount of access that this token has. Again, using that principle of limiting the amount of access that's provided, I only want to provide access to the base that I actually need this token to be linked to. I don't want to provide access to my entire workspace. So I'll click that and I'll click create token. So now, it's been created and I'll copy that one and I will pop it in here. I'll then add a table. So I've got test base, the tables projects. I want to be able to create and modify as well as use this data. Don't need to be able to delete. It will then come up with this format. And what we can see here is that all of these on the left hand side are the same as these column titles. So that's how it links it together. Um, in addition to that, we can choose and make sure that each data field that Bubble is reading has the correct type of data as well. So I'll save that. Now I've got my connection set up. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to view this data in Bubble. So if I jump over to my design tab, I've got a repeating group already set up here. And what I can do is I can select the type of content. So if I scroll down here, We've got the type of content which is being pulled in from our Airtable plugin, and that's projects. What I then need to do is I need to populate this information. So I can get data from an external API, got my Airtable projects. I can add constraints to these projects if I want. Because of the way I have this set up, I want all the projects to actually come up in my repeating group. I'll then populate this information. So I can go current sales projects, the data fields are coming up now as well. So we got projects and I also want to add the notes. So let's populate that. So let's preview this. Let's see what it looks like. Sweet. So we can see the projects are now coming up. What I also want to be able to do 
is I want to be able to edit the information in this particular project field. So I want to be able to edit the note itself. So we can see the note says this project has two clients. I want to say that it has five clients, for example. So the way I can go about this is I have a pop up here. And what I want to be able to do is I want to edit this information in a pop up. So if I go to this pop up, I want to change its type of content to the projects and I will leave the data sources empty for now. And what I will do is I'll change the initial content of this particular one to be the parent groups projects notes. And what I will do is when we click save, we want to modify a record on a table and it's going to be the parent groups projects that we are modifying. And the field I want to modify is the notes and it's going to be the multi-line inputs value. All right. What I now need to do is I also need to make sure that we hide the element once it's saved. And then when that button edit is clicked, we want to display data in the group pop up. And that's going to be the current sales project. So the way we've got it now is when I click edit, we display that data in the pop-up and then when we click save, we modify that record and we hide it. So let's have a look at this in action. So for project three, it says it has two clients. I'm changing this to five. I'm now clicking save. It's coming up. If I jump over to my air table, I can see project three now says that it has five clients. So it's also updated in air table. So that's an overview of exactly how to set up a connection between your Airtable base and your bubble application, including the ability not only to view the data, but also to be able to create and modify that information. Now, if you have any questions with regards to as to how to set this up, please feel free to leave a comment below this video.